will record it. So uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, first of all, thank you for joining this uh, dissemination seminar. Uh, thank you, uh, Hungary, SE India. Thank you, uh, Germany, of course, Belgium and the Netherlands for joining. Um, this seminar will be recorded. So in any case, we will send the, rec the recording uh, video to you. So, and you can use it in your own country. Uh, so, starting with the dissemination, uh, myself, I'm Eric Bortles, I'm doing karate about 40 years now, and I started working with disabled uh, people in 2006, and uh, because I was teaching many disabled students, I was uh, searching for a connection, for a methodology for them that would be uh, useful and uh, and easy for them to, to implement the karate in, in an easy way. And uh, well, at the moment I teach uh, at about uh, 200 uh, disabled students here in Belgium together with my uh, inclusive karate team. Um, we, uh, this dissemination came by uh, a telephone call from uh, the University of Rome they asked me if there was a possibility to uh, use my method in an Erasmus project. And I said, well, this would be a nice uh, proposal and a good idea. So they uh, acknowledged with me and I explained my methodology and they said, well, let's write something and let's try to make a scientific proof and use this method, uh, this inclusive karate with uh, people with the Down syndrome. And uh, here we are after three years with our dissemination and with our scientific proof. I would like to give also the word now to Adrian from Hungary, is our general secretary from ICARATA Global and also working with uh, disabled people in Hungary and is, was also part of this project. Adrian, I give the word to you. Thank you, thank you, Eric, and welcome everybody. And thank you for... Uh accept the invitation for this uh, webinar. So I, I only a few words about how I was involved in three, four years ago, Eric was in Hungary and he explained that there will be a scientific research uh, with the help of the Erasmus Plus. And if somebody are, is interested, can, can join with him this uh, work and uh, I, I didn't hesitate. I told immediately yes to Eric. And after I, I, I have to tell you to everybody that uh, it was the, the biggest adventure in my uh, para karate life in my last in, in the last three years. It uh, opened me a lot of new perspectives in my life, uh, a lot of new experiences, and uh, I learned really a lot with the help of this uh, project. So it, it was a very big event. So thank you, Eric, to, to can join uh, here. So uh, can we continue about uh, this? First, uh, we have to speak about uh, the Down syndrome peoples. Uh, this is a, uh, some, some words about that. It is uh, the most frequent, frequent of the chromosomal disorder in the world. Uh, what does it mean? You can see up the 321. It means that the United Nations in 2011, uh, in 10 of November, decided that it will be the international day of, of the Down syndrome people all in the world. And, and why it, 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 it is, because what is the Down syndrome is a trisomy of the 21st chromosome of the people. And if you, if you want to describe these uh, people, uh, they have typical somatic sign, for example, special face and head form. Everybody can recognize the eyes, the, the Japanese eyes, short legs and arms. Uh, all, uh, mostly the individuals with Down syndrome show a full motor coordination. So you can realize immediately that the coordination is not so good. 
the cognitive level, the cognitive level skills are not so high, but, but we can tell that there are some people who are very, very low, and between them, we can find some person who can have, for example, a bachelor degree. So it doesn't mean that every Down syndrome have a, a low cognitive skills. The, the level, the, the physical activity uh, of them, it's, 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 uh, it's very uh, uh, low uh, for them. And uh, uh, they have higher incidence of obesity related of the sedentary lifestyle. They are not motivated uh, in, in the move. And uh, this research wanted to know if they, we are using this method, we can change something in this. We can go to the uh, next page. About the participants, this project was uh, organized with five countries. For me, the most important countries obviously was Belgium and after Italy, uh, they were uh, the two uh, coordinators because the, the, the knowledge uh, arrived, arrived from uh, Belgium, the organization arrived from Italy and the other three countries like Romania, Austria and Hungary, we participate there as a co-workers. Uh, co uh, we decided to have around 60 persons. It means that 12 uh, person for each country to arrive that every country has to have 10 persons, but uh, unfortunately nobody uh, planned, uh, planned that we will have this COVID situation. So in the end, we finished this uh, project with 37 person, uh, what you can see on, on the page. And these are the average uh, uh, conditions of our, our participants. They were so young, so the average age was 26 years, a normal uh, uh, body structure, so, uh, 67 kilograms, and, and the higher uh, was a normal. So it, it was a very normal uh, Down syndrome people. And uh, we can go for the next page. This project, uh, when uh, we decide, uh, was decided to make this project, there were four different aims what we wanted to maintain. The first was to promote and enhance the social inclusion, inclusion of Down syndrome individuals through the practice of karate using this new approach, what was the uh, method of Eric. It was the first. The second aim was to improve physical conditions. Of course, the more, uh, what I, I speak uh, before, it, the motor skills, the coordination, the con cognitive functions, and satisfaction in daily living activities in Down syndrome individuals through inclusive karate courses. The third was another important aim. And I think step by step, we, we can reach our aims that train karate coaches in participating countries by providing them with specific skills regarding the approach to be used to standardize the project approach and make it transferable and re-applicable re in other contexts and countries. It, it was a very important uh, aim. And now I, 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 I'm 100% sure that in Hungary, it, it's arrived, uh, the aim, because uh, now we, we have a lot of Down syndrome uh, students and everybody continue uh, the activity with this. And we have a lot of trainers in Hungary who are inter interested in this uh, program. And the first uh, important aim to organize events and uh, to the public and show uh, them the topics such as the important, uh, the project, the topics of the project, such as the importance of physical activity for maintaining health the benefits of exercise for Down syndrome population. 
it, 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 it was the most important things. And the, the, pro, uh, the project has four different pla uh, the, uh, plannings. The first to analyze of local context through online questionnaires for families of people with Down syndrome people. This was the first step, it was three years ago. You can see uh, announcement uh, in the photo that we, it was our announcement how we wanted to find the people uh, to participate uh, in this uh, project. Only one question was that nobody can, uh, can participate in this project who has experience, who has uh, before karate experience before. Yes. The next planning, uh, the next step of the uh, planning uh, of the project was a very important uh, step. The definition of a training protocol and organization of the train trainer course in Hasselt. As you can see in the photo, we were unit in Hasselt and in the dojo of Eric, there were the uh, instructors the, from five countries and we learned all together how we has to continue yes. to work. Yes? yes? Boyan, can you put, uh, uh, can you mute please? Thank you. Uh, okay, can I uh, go into that? Yes, please Eric, this is your... Yeah, one moment because somebody needs to mute his uh, microphone. Okay. Okay. I was. Okay. Thank you, Boya. Can you mute? I changed on the phone. You need to put the uh, noise out. Boya. Hello. Okay, now is out. Good. I, I change. Good. I change from my computer to to phone. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, talking about this uh, dissemination for the uh, train the trainers, for me it was uh, important uh, to uh, see what uh, or how I could build up something that was understandable, first of all, for the coaches, because they only had a few days to train. And on the other hand, the question was, is this building up that I was writing out, is this going to work? So I stopped working because the, uh, the planning was 40 weeks. And uh, every week, I or we planned uh, one training every week. And uh, so I had to write another schedule every week and had to build it up. Boyan, you need to really put your microphone out because it's disturbing. So um, I start writing something out. I wrote a manual and uh, I teach the, the trainers and well, uh, they went home and they had to start practicing the manual, the manual that I wrote week by week. So they had to follow uh, the manual, how it was prescribed. So we could, uh, we could uh, check or we could make a scientific proof in the improvement of every country, how they improved at the same time with the same manual. Uh, okay, so I give the word back to uh, Adrian for the next uh, page. Yes, the next step was uh, of this project, the, the pilot study of the test and the validate the effectiveness of inclusive karate training in people with Down syndromes. We did the lo longitudinal study. It means effect effectively the 40 weeks of training. And it, it was very important what Eric told that uh, mainly everybody has to follow in the same time uh, the program. Uh, but in, when Eric wrote this uh, program, nobody knows the COVID, but after I explained why it was so important uh, to, to go ahead uh, 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 simultaneously in each, uh, each countries. And the first uh, part of the planning, the last is the dissemination of the disclosure, uh, disclosure of contents. Uh, it is now we are uh, uh, try to tell everybody 
what was the result of the study, and we want to announce and publi uh, make a publicity to this uh, method. Yes, and now we can continue uh, to the next. It, it was the longitudinal study. It was started in, uh, in uh, June or July or September. It was a little bit pre uh, when we wanted to start. But the most important thing was that every, in every country, uh, we, we made a pre-intervention assessment. It means that there was a, an Italian uh, uh, teach uh, controller from Italy uh, visited all the countries and we made the test, the, the pre-intervention test. And we, after we made the 40 weeks of continuity trainings, it was two training per week in, in Hungary. I think maybe it was in the other countries as well. And after the end, uh, in the next year, uh, we wanted to make again this post-intervention assessment and, and uh, with the pre and post assessment, we can uh, know what was the development of our students. And uh, what I told that it was important that everybody goes simultaneously because nobody knows that we have this COVID uh, situation. And it, it, for example, in, in Hungary, it was the half exactly in the 20th weeks uh, of the training and, and we, nobody wants to finish this study. We want everybody, all the countries, all the five countries wanted to save all the work what we invested in this project. And, uh, and we decided it was a very clever, very intelligent decision. Uh, not, I don't know who was supposed, but it was really intelligent that make online training and online training not only in local in, in, in our countries, but we did online training in for all the countries. And for that reason, if everybody uh, simultaneously goes, we can realize that all the countries had uh, the same level. And every, every country has the possibility uh, to train one week and after another country the next week. And we can see that when Hungary was the teacher, for example, the Romanian or the Belgian uh, athlete was the same level, uh, uh, same level, and it, it was very, very nice. And after we, we did the uh, post-intervention assessment, so with, with this online training, we can we could save this this big work what we invest and what we did before. So, so it was very important for us. Yes, yes, Adrian. So, uh, yeah, that's true. So, the that was the the problem. Of course, we had to solve the problem, and we came up with the idea. The two weeks training it was not possible anymore. So, like Adrian told, one week we do the country. So, in our country, we would teach our Down syndrome uh, students for Belgium, and then the other uh, training would be an international training, and. Uh, all every week, somebody from the other country would teach to the others because the interesting thing was also that uh, the methodology, you know, you don't need to speak the language, but just showing the colors, red and blue and uh, doing everything in mirror, it was understandable for everybody. So we could easily teach also um, through uh, to the computer. And this was a uh, very interesting, but there was another thing I want to tell you, uh, especially in Belgium. Uh, for us, it was also important, you know, to 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 keep on training. And uh, I started an iKarate global uh, YouTube channel. It's still uh, available. And I put uh, movies there of 20 and 25 minutes. So they could put the movie on, stand in front of the television, uh, we arranged the mats for them at home because they couldn't come here. So I put the mats out. So they came in the porch in front of the house and they took the mat, put it out and they put the video on. So, and they could uh, train whenever they wanted. And you know, the very interesting thing here is with this dissemination was that even uh, some of these students trained more than the two times a week because and every time, because there was nothing to do, and every time they said, let's put the video on, 
and they trained every day. We had some students that trained every day. And even, you know, there were some videos, 10, 15, you know, putting the same video on was no problem. It was like, like us when we were young and reading a comic, you know, you, you read the comic 20 times, it was no problem. And it's the same for them. And still, you know, they're working and, and training. As we speak, they put some videos on and they train and they, they made a big improvement afterwards. I was like, maybe it was not so good, but at the end, when they came back out of the COVID, the ones who trained with the videos, I, I saw personally a very big improvement. So on the other hand, it was, it was a, uh, how can I say, a, a project inside a project. We created through the COVID, COVID a project inside a project. That's, that's what I wanted to tell you. So, and uh, if we look at our uh, material, our equipment that we used, the first thing, yeah, it's very important is the red and the blue wristband because we don't use left and right because it's invented. Of course, the wristband red and blue, the colors are also invented, but you can see it. You can see on your right wrist, the red band. So it's very easy to connect with, if you stretch the red arm out, you look at the red and you stretch it. So the connection in the brain goes much quicker. So this was one of the, the head things in the uh, material that we use is the red and the blue. In any case, if there are some people who wants to join this methodology, you start with the red and the blue risk, yeah? And you can teach and you don't count anymore, but you can count with red and blue. Piroche hmm? cake. No? The second thing was the mat that I uh, invented and created. You see on the right side of the screen. And uh, you see there are six feet. And in every feet, there is a color, a pictogram, and a number. And so that means there are three levels. And uh, everybody can join this. Because most of the people with Down syndrome, they can understand numbers, uh, very few. Some of them don't understand colors but it's easy to understand the pictograms. That means if you put somebody on the red cloud and the blue sun, and we say, move your foot to the white glasses, they see all the white or the glasses and they put the feet on. Yeah? In any case, the startup, if you see the, you see the cards there, uh, uh, the hand cards, the eight hand cards, if we put the hand card of the white glasses up, you know, they see the same on the floor and they will put the foot on the white glasses. That was the idea of movement, yeah? And on the other hand, you know, they can stretch the arms out or bend the arms with the red and the blue. The other thing was the uh, side directional cards. You see uh, the number one, two, three, four. Here we have the hand, yeah? And this one was hanging on every side of a wall in the, in the room. So four uh, walls, means four cards and they were positioned in the room and always the green card with the rabbit was on the front the yellow card with the bird was on the back the red yeah because take care eh, here on the screen is a trainer's mat normally the red is on the right side yeah take care so the red fish was on the right side and the blue cat was on the left side so it was not only moving uh, forwards and backwards, but also going to the sides in the room was very important for us, especially when you want to learn them how to do a kata, because the kata is moving to four directions. So easy for them to move to the blue cat. And if after that, they move to the red fish, that was very understandable for them, for the moving to different directions in the room. At the end, we also had the uh, blue and the red pets. And it's always nice when you put a pet in front of somebody with blue, they know they have to hit it with blue. So it was very understandable. And you know, it's karate and they like to hit. So the pet with the colors was very usable for them. On the other hand, we also use the uh, bowls and these four color bowls were the same than the four directional cards, yeah. And anyway, you can do a lot of these things. You can find it on the icons website, on the movies, what we do with that. But it was also always related 
to the four sides, the four colors. And you see, we only always use the hoops or the rings. And also there, we use the same four colors. Yeah, because at the end, yeah, in the program, I, I have to lie for that, after week 30 or 32, the mat will go away and the rings will come in the place. So instead of standing on the red and the blue foot, there would be a red and a blue ring or a hoop, and it would stand in the red and the blue. And from there, they would do their exercises. So that was the improvement of the methodology, if it was possible. Because like uh, Adrian told uh, you, you know, Down syndrome, there's a lot of uh, different uh, IQs. You have the Down syndrome who are very clever, and you have the people with the Down syndrome who have a low level. So everything was accessible. And we could teach the whole group at the same time, or with the mats, or with the hoops. So that was the material we used in this project. If we speak now about our methodology, three years later, we use more materials. But in this project, these were the materials we used. Over to Adrian. Yes, and uh, th that was you, uh, you uh, before you could see the equipments. And now uh, the input and uh, the outgoing skills we, we tested uh, before and the finish of the test. And we, we use the test for gross motor development. Uh, what is this? This is a, uh, the test of gross motor devel development is a norm referenced measure of common gross motor skills composed by certain skills belonging to classes. It was uh, divided in two classes, the, the test. The, for, for, uh, the first was the locomotor skills, and the second was the object control. It was a ball. We worked with the ball. The, uh, the locomotor skills was the running for the horizontal jumping, the hooping. It was a step with one leg the galloping, the sliding, and the skipping. It was six uh, tests, what, we, uh, what every uh, athletes in all countries do the same. And there was a, a researcher who visited all the countries and did this test with all, all the students. And the, the ball test was, uh, you can see in the photo with a baseball strike with two hands, with a tennis strike with one hand and kicking and so on and so on, catching, uh, that was the, the ball. We can go ahead and you can see, if we can go ahead, what was the most difficult task? The skipping uh, after the uh, pre-test, the input test, we uh, realized that the skipping and the kicking was the the, the most difficult for them. They didn't know how to do it. The result so, so, uh, was so bad. And after when we finished the test, we can show what, can, what, what has happened. We can go to the next. Yes. And you can see that in the locomotor skills, there was uh, in six skills, there was C, uh, three skills, what was uh, better. After there was a, a good development. It was the running, the horizontal jumping, and the sliding where, where they improved the, the skills. Not, uh, not all, only three, but it, it was a very, very good step. And I, I think that the skipping, uh, could not uh, uh, be better. It is only my opinion that we could not finish well uh, the test uh, or the trainings because the skipping is a jaku movement. And if you do a jaku in the, in the end, if you, you will start the, the jaku tsuki and other, you can uh, develop the skipping as well. It is my opinion. And the object control, there were, there were Four thing, what uh, was better? One hand strike, the kicking, 
But before I underlined it, that the kicking was the most difficult for them. And in, in the kicking, they could improve their capacities, the catching and the underhead throw. And it was a very, very big uh, step to, to continue. So if, if we look at the final result of the uh, test of gross motor, uh, motor development, we can see in the next page. Yes, we can go to the next page. I try. OK. Yes, yes. That the blue is the pretest, and the red is the post test, and the, the third column is all together. Uh, the, the, the first column you can see the only the motorical skills, locomotor skills. In the second row, you can uh, uh, you can see the object control with the balls, and in the third. You can see all together these two that we can see that it was a development uh, in uh, af after this uh, 40 uh, weeks of training. So it means that the method is working and the method is functioning. And if we, if the children go to or the students go to the train training, they can develop. The, the skills in adulthood as well. And that is very important. But not only this kind of test we did, we did uh, online questionnaires in the families. And, and it was very important that not only the, the skills uh, was changing in, in their life, but the, the quality of, of the life was changing. There was a question, for example, do you see any physical change in your child through this karate training session. And as you can see in the uh, screen that the, the, the change, uh, there was a big change. Everybody told that, yes, they are very uh, satisfied that they, the, the physical change they saw in, 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 uh, in the family, in their child. The next photo, is another, do you see any change that, uh, in your behavior due to the karate training? Yes, and, and that, that was another thing that before there was a, a, a 42% was they, uh, they no see anything. And after it, is, it was only the half that it, it is very good influence the uh, behavior of the, of the athlete the karate. And the next question was, uh, do you see progress in her or his structure day-to-day -day activities? What does it mean, uh, this question? Uh, that I, I explained uh, like this, that in a, when I spoke with the families, I want to explain this question to the families that or oh, when uh, they, they were waiting the karate training, they prepared the, the bag to going to, to, to train and they, they were waiting. Where will, where will be the next training tomorrow? Oh, oh, I will go, I am very happy, very happy. So everybody was waiting that, that to can participate uh, in the karate training. So it, it was very, very good. Uh, and it was a very uh, good progress. I think, and they, they, there was that uh, the attention was much bigger for them in the school. Some uh, parents told that. Next photo, and it is the last, and that was the very important for us that we asked for the for, for the parents, but they received what we promised. If your expectation repaid after this. The karate lesson and 30% told yes, absolutely. As it, it, it was a, a very good answer because what we promised them, it, 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 they, we realized what we promised. We, we didn't promise them a miracle that uh, it will change 100% the life of them, 
but they, they can see a develop and that develop they could see. And another was very important for us, for karate trainers, the last question, will or she continue doing uh, inclusive karate after these 40 weeks of karate? And yes, absolutely, half of them, uh, they told, yes, absolutely. And I can tell you only the statistic in Hungary that we, uh, our group was 19 person who started this research. And until now, we have already finished the research. Until now, uh, 18 person are practicing karate. So that was the very, very big step. Why it was important to do this investment? Because now in Hungary, there are a lot of new students and a lot of people know that this uh, uh, inclusive karate teaching method exists. Yes, we can go ahead to the another uh, photo because we can speak about the testimonies maybe it is your words eric okay adrian uh, so yes uh, we did of course also some testimonies and uh, especially with the parents and it's always nice when you have some testimonies of parents who come to the front like there's one parent who made a testimony and it's so realistic and it's so interesting to hear how they see the improvement of their kit and uh, we have a few testimonies of that and uh, uh, one of them is uh, is the you see the the man uh, talking there one of his boys one of his boy was also uh, joining the project and the, his boy is 39 years old like we all uh, so said in the project, you know, it's 39 years old, what can he improve? Is there still a possibility to improve? And of course, he told us also that we were not so interested to join the project because my son is 39 years old. We did a lot of things and it was always a failure. And uh, well, there was never any special improvement. But anyway, you know, uh, the person said, well, we just did it. But after a few uh, trainings, he already saw an improvement with his son and that was balance. We could balance on one leg and be, because it was also in the project, the exercises, because before, nine, 39 years old, he never could it. And there he made his balance. And the other thing, the, the, the uh, father said, that was the first thing he saw, that was the, the punctuality, the the uh, interest, like Adrian was talking, the same in Belgium, like the bag, the suitcase was ready to go to the training. He was very enthusiastic uh, to go to the training. Uh, so intellectual, social, and emotional, he, he uh, made a big improvement. And then after a few months, it was not only the, the balance yeah, uh, that, that we saw improving, but also his concentration was uh, much better because the training was 50 minutes. And he never could uh, concentrate more than 20 to 30 minutes into a, a, a sort of uh, training. So uh, there was a, an unbelievable development. He could do 50 minutes of training and during the whole class. He could finish the, the whole class. So very interesting. On the other hand, there was also improvement with left and right because the father told never in... Uh, 25 years or 30 years, we could learn him to go with his bicycle to the left or to the right. And now it's easy because they put the wristband on the bicycle, on the steering wheel, red on the right side, left on the blue. And they just say to the blue side and he's turning correctly. Very safe, of course, because anyway, you never know which direction he will go. But with this one, that was also a, a, a big improvement. So, uh, yeah, and also, you know, the, the group, the environment, uh, the parents meeting each other. Uh, so it, it was a tremendous uh, experience for, for the parents and also for his, uh, his uh, boy to, to see all the improvement. And of course, he's still training with the coaches. And, uh, you know, like Adrian said, it's very sustainable because out of the project, they're still training. It's now a, a, a separate karate group, an extra club, as we speak. And, and the coaches who, who worked on the project 
are now the trainers who, will who are teaching weekly uh, to this uh, student. There was a, a second uh, testimony, and this one was also very, very interesting because this boy had a hemiplegia. So one side of the arm uh, couldn't stretch very well and one leg was very difficult to move. And, uh, you know, they go every, uh, every week uh, to the physiotherapist or every day, I don't know how many, many times, but uh, there was never a big improvement. And suddenly, you know, working with the Agi UK, stretching the arms, and, you know, the tools are very interesting when you have a ball in your hand and we say just uh, stretch your arm with a ball. It's very interesting to do it because it's a challenge. And suddenly, and the interesting thing was also he did it at the presentation. Suddenly he could stretch the arm that was uh, with where he had his hemiplegia. And the kinesist or the physiotherapist were baffled that he could do that. And also at the uh, dissemination, in Belgium, the boy showed how he stretched his uh, his arm, uh, what was uh, not 100% functional. So this was uh, unbelievably very interesting. So it's not only you know uh, the, the improvement of cognitivity, but also physically. And if you have a physical impairment, also there, you know, you improve your, your physical skills, even if you have an impairment. We always say, if you have an hemiplegia, it's not like, yeah, don't use the arm. Uh, no, no, you still keep on using the arm because there's still movement and you see there's still a possibility to increase the movement. So this was a very second interesting testimony also. I don't know, uh, Adrian, if you have some uh, testimonies over there, uh, I, give the I, I put only uh, the photo of this girl, but in all, only a few sentences that you can see, as I, I spoke before, that uh, what, what is the typical of the Down syndrome people, the overweight, for example. And we can see this girl is, is, is a little bit overweighted and, and she, was a, she was not so active in the past, doesn't want it to, to work uh, or, or have a sport activity. But after this, when uh, she started to practice karate with us, in this summer we had a summer camp. We organized with a, uh, we teach there with a, with my uh, colleague, uh, and the the young girl was the first who wanted to describe uh, to this camp, and she 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 wants to be there, and she was so interested all day to to practice this this. Uh, in this event, this, this training camp, and, and the mother and the family was very, very satisfied because they have never had this experience before, that the, the girl was so enthusiastic to, to work and move. And you can see uh, what she is doing now. She was, in the past, she was a little, uh, she was always afraid to, to uh, make movement with, uh, with balance. And with, of course, with the help of another trainer, uh, they, they can do this movement. So it, it, it was very, very nice. And the family was very, very satisfied. But I, I, I believe that everybody of, the, of us can, can uh, tell a nice story about the testimonies, what, what karate or, or the method can, can, can give to, to the students and to the families. And if we can continue, I suggest to continue to the next photo that uh, we can explain that where we are now, because what was the aim? In the beginning, we told that there was an aim of our project to, to make the inclusion of our students. And we put here three photos. And why it's so important, these three photos? We, uh, we told that nobody can practice uh, or participant in this project who had experienced be, uh, karate before. And, no, uh, and of course, uh, nobody had. And after uh, this training, uh, in this first photo, when the pulpit, uh, the second and the third place, there are two uh, students who already can go to a championship. It was in Belgium, and, and they participate in the championship. And in the, in the second, photo you can see that 
it's it's a well talented uh, Down syndrome people. He's a, a good cognitive qualities, but she can do a kata alone today. She can do a, a kata alone, and and the third photo why I I uh, uh, decide to put it the development of the students because uh, we know everybody that in the kata the develop in the karate the develop we can see that the changement of the color of the obi of the belt and if we are looking they have yellow belt and it means that they had already passed an exam what we did together with my friend Attila in in Hungary and uh, and they already make a very big step in, in in the karate level as well so this is where we are now that they are active they are continue and and they for uh, for them the karate became a part of them life and that's yeah. important yeah so the the competitions that we do with i karate global are uh, a very low uh, entrance so everybody can join easy and uh, of course this was a, an opportunity also for the people down syndrome that were working or in our training in the project they uh, could join our competition and uh, and anyway uh, when we were in the covid uh, situation there were no competitions anymore because if you see the belgium competition on your left screen that was just before the COVID, and then afterwards, everything dropped dead. Yeah. So then, uh, and that was also very interesting because uh, we had to keep on moving with them, but also with all our other uh, students with disabilities. So we started an online European Championship, and we had uh, uh, 206 participants in this competition out of, uh, I believe, 12 countries, and that was out of our expectations. And it was such a big success that we said that the, the COVID keep on going. So we said after a half a year, well, let's do a world championship now because we have to give something to them that they have a challenge to go for because there was nothing to do for them. So we started a online world championship. And guess what? We had a 304 participants out of a 22 countries. And of course, our uh, Erasmus students also joined in this competition. I believe at least from four out of five countries who were joining uh, this uh, Erasmus uh, project. And like Adrian told uh, us, yeah, no, they're still training, still practicing, still developing, and the dissemination keeps on going. Uh, last week, uh, no, I, no uh, two days ago, I get an email from the group from Italy and they're going to disseminate this methodology into 20 new clubs. So that's a big thing. So Italy is also going uh, forwards like Belgium and Hungary and hopefully uh, Austria and Romania also keep on going. There's not so much connection there, but you know, you see how this uh, project keeps on going and that's the, the main goal, you know, we wanna, we wanna do. and. Uh, at the end, you know, it's not so difficult to learn this methodology. If you go to the ICONS website, you will find uh, uh, in uh, six different languages, the uh, manual that I wrote. So, and there are some movies attached, so you can see and you can, uh, you can start developing uh, in your own country with this methodology. Adrian? Yes. And what is where we want to arrive we so, uh, and uh, where, where the project want to arrive, it is the future. Uh, I, I strongly believe that not only in Hungary, but in the, all, all the uh, part of the world, some of our athletes who are very good for, uh, and using our method, we, we uh, can arrive to the top. Now in Hungary will be uh, the next WKF championship will organize in 2023. Uh, by the here it is only 2022, but the, the COVID situation it promoted one year later. But I strongly believe that somebody of this Erasmus project can be represent 
Hungary in the Hungarian national team, the Down syndrome people in this world championship, or the, in the next iKarate global inclusive uh, world championship will be held in Hungary in 2022. And I, I hope and I strongly uh, believe that some most of them will uh, present and participate uh, on this event. And they can show how they developed and how they joined uh, this uh, sport. So <coughs> this is the future for, for us that not only for the best, but for everybody, we can give an opportunity to, to participate in different events. And uh, what was the resume of, of our work? Because when we started this project, the aim was to have a scientific article and uh, it was uh, realized. We, we are very happy to tell to everybody that in the last uh, <coughs> two or three weeks ago, in the International Journal, Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, uh, this article was appeared, was edited, and uh, title is motor competence in individuals with Down syndrome. Is an improvement still possible in adulthood, adulthood? And that is the big question. And as you can saw in uh, the post test before that the answer is an improvement still possible in adulthood. Yes, it is. That is an improvement. And, and it, is more it is very important because it means I, I speak with uh, special need teachers, colleagues in Hungary, and when I, I uh, uh, show them this article, they told me that they use the same word. We can give back the hope to the families, to the peoples that in adulthood, we can develop the, the peoples, the individuals. And that is very, very important. And it means that until when we are able to move, we have to uh, uh, move and we have to practice sport to develop our skills and then uh, the skills of the uh, uh, disabled peoples. So that, that was the most important things that we can officially and scientifically demonstrate that this teaching method is a is working and it's a very very good teaching method so i'm very proud to be the partner of this uh, this work so that was the more most important thing i think now okay so okay thank you adrian for this uh, good explanation yeah it was very clear i think and uh, so before we uh, finish uh, first of all i want to thank everybody to to be here uh, this evening and also or today in some countries and uh, i also want to advise and ask if we send you this presentation and this uh, scientific proof uh, from uh, this uh, uh, scientific uh, newspaper so please spread it use it and uh, uh, we advise you to keep on practicing. If you're interested, we are very happy to help you forwards uh, to keep on working or to stop working with this uh, methodology. So uh, thank you, everybody. Before we go, uh, there's some we would like to uh, connect with everybody. If there are some questions, we are happy to answer that. But anyway, I'm going to uh, stop the video recording now.